welcome to react course 1. In this video we'll clean up our project, configure ESLint and Prettier, choose framework for styling, add fonts and add path LSS for TypeScript. Stay tuned and let's start coding. The first step I take at the beginning of every project is setting up the formatter. We'll be using Prettier, so I will install Prettier and the ESLint config for Prettier, which helps fixing conflicts between ESLint and Prettier. If you usually use the ESLint plugin Prettier, please check the Prettier documentation, as there is a line about it. It's not recommended because the formatter actually usually works faster than the linter and we don't want ESLint to drive our Prettier. Now let's add the line to the ESLint config and set up Prettier in the IDE. I'm using WebStorm where I can specify the file extensions that should be formatted by Prettier. I will add SCSS and CSS here as well because we'll be using it instead of CSS. So we are done with linting and formatting. Next step is to clean up the project by deleting all the files related to the example application. After it's done, let's check if everything works correctly. Everything seems working and uh, blank. I will do git commit after each logical step to the branch named after the episode number, so you can check a particular step in a specific episode. I also will use git conventional commits for commit messages. In future we'll set up pre-commit hooks for validation of such messages. Now let's think about styling. There is one big question, do we use CSS in JS or not? If you don't know what it is, please watch some crash course. It's a holy war question and generally speaking CSS in JS provides better developer experience, but can be less performant and can cause other problems. But because this course is about React and we want convenient development process, I decided to use CSS in JS approach. In addition, I don't want to create every UI component from scratch, so I chose Material UI as UI framework for this course. Now let's install dependencies. After this, let's add fonts. I will copy font files to the src styles fonts folder. Next, I will create a CSS file for fonts and uh, I will fix paths to font files. Also, I will add a CSS files for global styles and variables and I will aggregate all of these in index CSS. To support SCSS syntax, we should install SAS, so I do it in terminal. After that, I will create shared folder, which will include all our shared logic. Here I will create UI folder, particularly for shared UI components. Here I will create a text component, which will serve as a styled wrapper for the material UI typography component.
First, I will create a type for the props that extends typography props and I will add a custom property to enable conditional styling. To achieve this, we need to create a custom styled component. Material UI uses Emotion as the default CSS in JS library. If you're unfamiliar with Emotion, I recommend watching a crash course on it. We'll override the material UI styles if the bold prop is passed. Now let's add the app component just to display our title. Additionally, we need to exclude this prop from being passed directly to the DOM node, because it will cause warnings. Finally, we should create a custom theme for Material UI to set up our phones as the default. Let's see how all this works. Looks good. The last thing for this video will be setting up TypeScript path aliases. So let's do it. First, we need to add the base URL and paths to the tsconfig.json file. Next, we should add the LSS to our bit config file. If you encounter an error related to import path, please install the types node package. Now let's fix all the paths. However, remember that inside the component folder we should not use LSS because component parts should be bound to each other. Once we have made these changes, let's ensure that everything is working correctly. In the next episode, we'll focus on developing a mock server for our app. Stay tuned and see you in the next episode.